Hi card making friends, welcome back. It's Sandy McIver here and today I'm playing with Picket Fence Ombre Paper Glazes. These are a smooth and creamy medium used to create texture and shimmer in your paper crafting. I'm going to demonstrate some different applications with these glazes and at the end of the video I have a bunch of samples to share with you. Look at this stuff, isn't it just luscious? You'll want to protect your work surface. I have got a craft mat down and the white mat that I'm showing you is from Tim Holtz uh, glass mat, the little white piece that sits on top of the glass. Okay, I like working on this as it's small and you'll see it's easy to turn. I'm also going to be using the Sunset Purple Paper Glazes. I'm applying it over top of purple cardstock and I'm going to be applying it through the picket fence framed leaves. Now you see that I just used some pixie spray. I like to use that to keep the little pieces of the stencil flat uh, while I'm working. And I'm also adding some post-it tape to the edges just to make sure that it doesn't move while I'm adding the application. So I'm going to open all three bottles and you'll notice in the ombres there's a late medium and dark of each color and I've got some palette knives and um, I usually use just one and I've got lots of paper towel off to the left hand side that I use to clean up my palette knife when I want to change colors. So I'm starting with the light and you'll see that I'm just taking a tiny little bit out at a time and I am randomly adding it around my stencil. Um, not so randomly, I'm trying to keep it even because I'm going to be spreading the color around once I get all three of the colors down. I'm going to the darkest one next, just because that's the one I wanted to pick up. It doesn't really matter which order you put them in. But I'm trying to stay on the same side um, at, from the light as I did in each of the applications, um, trying to make it a little bit uniform. I say that just as I put it on the other side of this one. <laughs> I want kind of equal amounts of dark and light all the way around the frame and that helps to make it uniform, in my mind anyway. So now I'm into the medium and you see that I'm not worrying too much about butting up against the other colors. I don't mind if it blends a little bit because at the very end I'm going to blend it a whole bunch anyway. Um, and just working my way around. Basically what I'm doing here is making sure all the holes are filled in, that uh, I have nice coverage I'm not also worrying about how even it is because I'm going to even it out at the end when I do a swipe all the way across. So again, just moving it around, cleaning my brush if I get it too, or my palette knife if I get it too contaminated. And that just means I'm wiping it on a paper towel to clean it off. One thing I will say is don't forget to clean the edges of your palette knife. Quite often you get a bunch built up on the edges and that will blend in with the color that you're trying to work with. Okay, so I'm coming back in with my light and just filling in a couple of more areas. And I'm going to use the white as my overlay to kind of blend this, okay? So here I'm going to do the first set of the scraping. I'm coming all the way down and scraping, and this is evening off my paper glaze for me so it's nice and flat. It's also helping to blend the colors together so that I don't have stark contrast between one color and another. And I got to the end and I decided that uh, the dark was a little bit too dark. So what I did was I'm taking a little bit of the light and I'm just blending it very lightly over top of the darker colors just to tone it down a little bit. You can still see the dark through it, but now it's got that beautiful light shimmer across the top of it from the pale purple. Okay, so it's time to audition what we did. Carefully pull that off and look at the beautiful, beautiful ombre effect you get from doing this. Okay, next up we're going to play with the blues. This is the sky blue selection and again there's an A, B and C. This time I'm going to on a pale piece of blue and I'm using the same stencil. And I'm going to show you a different way of ombre. I'm going to start at the bottom with the dark and work my way up to the lightest. I have sticky fingers because I just sprayed that again with the pixie spray. Sorry about that. Taking a minute to get it down there and my extra security down the sides and let's get going. We're going to open all the lids. You don't want to leave these open for a really long time but just doing an application on, through a stencil it's fine. They don't dry out that quickly. Okay, so starting at the bottom, as I said, with the darkest color, and this is such a pretty color. I love this color. 
and I'm filling in all the holes just using a little bit at a time because I don't want to move around a whole pile of that stuff. And this stuff actually really lasts a long time and it's extremely spreadable. So just kind of play around with a small amount of it and I think you'll be surprised how far you can go with just a small amount. So I'm just going part way up the sides, cleaning my palette knife and I'm switching over now to the medium. And this is where it comes in really handy to be able to move this thing around because that way you're not trying to stand on your head to get to the other side. You can actually move it around to make it comfortable to do the application. So just popping up to the other side there to add some. And I did do a goop right there. I'm just going to pick that up and add it in. Okay. Turning it again because I'm going to do the top portion, cleaning my palette knife, and I'm coming in with the lightest blue for this one. And the other thing I'll say about this little um, craft sheet that I'm working on, it is super easy to clean this up from it. So I have used this for so many different applications. It's a really, really handy tool. Tim should be selling them separately because I think I'm going to wear this one out. Okay, so once again, got it all on there. I'm going to do my scrape and even it out. And at the same time, I'm adding some of the light color over top of the darker colors. Again, because I want that nice glimmer, but it's sheer enough that you can see the other color through it, which is really nice. And taking the access and putting it over on my paper towel. You don't want to put it back into your container because it's already been contaminated with the other colors. And there we go. Kind of like icing a cake, except you've got to keep it nice and flat. And there I go. I'm just going around again, getting up at any extras, keeping it nice and flat. And don't forget to wash your stencil as soon as you are finished. So as soon as I peel this off, I run down the hall to the bathroom I have up here, and I clean that out. And I use a soft um, toothbrush to get into all the little nooks and crannies. Now, isn't that pretty? It turned out just gorgeous. Where do you see the card I made with this one? It's really fun. Next up, my current favorite is pumpkin spice. Check these out. I just love these. There's a beautiful gold, uh, a really nice dark coppery color, and then a nice orange red. I'm going to be doing a slimline this time with the slimline reverse leaf stencil, also from Picket Fence Studios. And as you can tell by the scuzz all over it, one of my favorites. I didn't get to cleaning it right away because I was too busy playing. And I've also got two pieces of cardstock down there. Um, I couldn't decide whether to do a craft or a white card base. I am going to work on the white just because it's easier to see in the video, but I do finish the card at the end done in craft and I show you the difference uh, on the finished cards at the end. So again, tape it down to the craft mat, making sure that you got it nice and secure. And this is, I think, three and a half by eight and a half. I like to start with these and then I cut them down when I'm ready to make my cards. So again, I'm just adding some pixie spray to the back of my stencil just so that it holds all the little center pieces down for me. Um, otherwise, I find I get a little heavy with the paper glaze and sometimes it will seep underneath of the stencil and it doesn't give me a clean stencil. So by doing this, I get a nice, clean, finished, professional looking product. Adding my security down the sides. Um, one thing about those, if you happen to get paper glaze on them, make sure you wipe them off before you change colors as well. Otherwise, you can accidentally hit it with your palette knife and bring it on in. Okay, so here's the third way I like to use these, starting with the darkest again, and we're going to go from darkest to lightest, but this time I'm going to angle it in with the way the leaf stencil is. And again, the ease of being able to turn this with the smaller craft mat is essential, I think, um, when doing this. So this way you can go from both ends, top or bottom, sideways, and it helps you just being able to fill in all the spots making sure that you have good coverage, but you don't have a whole bunch of goopy stuff all over the place. So pick up the extra as much as you can. And now I'm going to change colors. So I'm cleaning my knife to this beautiful orangey red. I just love this color. And I ended up when I made the card, Spellbinders has uh, a card stock that is almost identical color. So it ended up being a really nice fall card. And it's a little bit on the masculine side. So these make great masculine birthday cards for the fall fellows in your life. So again, working in 
from the outside and I'm trying just to butt up against that darker brown without picking it up because I don't want to contaminate all of my red. At the end I'm going to pull it down to clean it so there, there will be a little bit of blending but that just helps to blend it from one color to the next. Now we're coming in with this beautiful light gold and I'm just going to start at the top and work my way down and I get myself painted into a corner here and you'll see that I'm going to change my knives. Picket Pence Studios has a set of palette knives and this is the one I use most but when I'm doing this technique I switch over to the one that's got the very very sharp tip because it's easier to get into all these little nooks and crannies when you've got a nice sharp tip at the end of it. So I missed a spot. <laughs> I'm going back with my red, just filling in that one corner. And I'm going to try and take some of the excess off here. Blending. Okay, so I'm doing my pullover and it's picking up any extras that I have. Making sure that my finished product is going to be nice and flat. And gently peeling this off and you end up with this gorgeous leaf. Isn't it fabulous? Okay, I'm using the reverse leaf stencil again, this time on black, and I'm using the fall fashion. And I want to show you how beautiful these are on a dark cardstock. Uh, dark blue is also very nice. Dark purple is beautiful. <coughs> Excuse me. I get so excited. Okay, I'm all geared up and I'm ready to start. And again, same as the last one, we're going to be working on the sides, pulling in, following the detail in the leaf stencil. But this time I'm going to be random about my application. I'm not going to do it in a complete ombre. I'm going to move the colors all over, like I did in the very first card uh, with the purple. So again, I'm coming up here and I'm just adding a bunch in near the top. I'm going to turn this around so that I can do another applique on the other side. And I'm trying to stay in kind of in between the lines of the leaves, which is sometimes hard to do. But you have to just be patient and go slow. I'm going to put one tip at the end here and then just a little bit on the other side. So it's even, but it's not identical. Okay, so cleaning my palette knife. You go through a lot of paper towel. Have a whole roll with you. <laughs> and again, don't forget the edges. Okay, so now I'm going to the pink, which is the lightest of the colors. And I'm going to be adding that in. And again, you get into all the little nooks and crannies here. And trying to fill in and again don't use too much it's easier see this is where I go to my fine tip it's a much easier to move around and moving small amounts at a time is also easier to move around because it's really hard to pick up all the excess if you put a whole whack of it on there so see there I'm trying to straighten it out and pick up the extra and I'm moving it over here and using it up trying not to pick up too much of that dark blue That dark blue is gorgeous, by the way. I think it's kind of like blue jeans, faded blue jeans. It's just the prettiest blue. I think I need to do a whole card with it. Okay, and moving it around. I'm also leaving some spots for the middle cut color, which is purple, but I'm going to add one more strip of pink just down this side. For all the leaf cards, I think this color combination ends up being my absolute favorite at the end. Wait till you see the card this makes. Okay, into the purple. And we're filling in the rest of the spots. And see how much easier it is to go with that little pointed uh, knife instead of the wide one. When you get in here and you're trying to follow it just makes it easier. So I do get a little bit over top of the blue. The one thing you have to remember when you're doing this is whatever you put over top is going to be the last color. So don't get too carried away with covering up the blue that's underneath. Otherwise, by the end of the card, you're not going to be able to see it. It's all going to be your last color. 
So at the tip, you'll see that I kind of, I colored over the pink. And I'm just trying to sneak that last bit of purple in there. Okay, and I'm doing this all in real time. I'm not speeding this up at all because I want you to see the process. Okay, so now I'm going to take my wider knife on an angle and I'm going to start at one end. I'm just filling in a couple of spots and I'm pulling out to the sides and leveling this all out, taking off any of the excess without contaminating the whole leaf. So if you pull at an angle, then you're not going to get your other colors going over top of the ones that you just so carefully laid down. But you want a nice smooth finish at the same time. So there we go. Okay, off with the armor. Let's have our reveal. And look at this on black cardstock. Isn't it fabulous? I just love this. It turned out so cool. And here's the newest addition to the family. This is Nutcracker Ballet Paper Glaze Luxe Ombre. Say that fast three times. <laughs> this stuff's amazing. Check this out. I'm going to do this on black. Look at the blue. Okay, so this there's deep blue, hot pink, and soft pink. And it's the newest mix with a glitter base. It has mica and glitter infusion to bring out maximum shine. And look at it, it just glitters. And it's like glitter paper without the shedding because this stuff does not come off, which is very cool. Okay, so I'm going to play with the pinks for this one. And I'm going through the Slimline Rainbow stencil. Again, starting with the darker color, working my way to the light. And this pink is just luscious. Wow, it's pretty. So, and this stuff has got such a gleam to it. And it is so easy to blend. Look at how easy it goes on. It's just amazing. I'm just about out of this bottle. I'm going to have to get Nicole to send me another bottle. And it makes beautiful card bases. So I'm taking off the any extra that is there. And I'm going to just clean my palette knife once again. And if you want to do a whole bunch of this at once, what I do is I take a container of water and put it down beside me. And that way I can dump my dirty stencils into the water without having to run down the hallway and clean them. And that way I've just got a whole mess to clean up at the end. But the water helps to keep it soft so that it doesn't stick to your stencils until you're ready to clean. So I'm starting at the top with the lightest and this is a beautiful pale pink. I know it's hard to see in my video because I have my lights on, but this stuff is luscious. You should see it on black cardstock. Oh, it just sparkles. I think it's the mixture of the mica in there that makes these so special. So what I'm doing right now is I'm filling all the holes, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten out that pink at the bottom a little bit too, and I'm not gonna clean my knife before I come back up top and swoosh it around. And see how that way I'm blending in a little bit of the dark pink into the light pink, and it's just adding a little bit of depth to that top pink. So I think I'm happy with that. Take off the protection and peel this back. It is stunning. So pretty, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And I love this stencil too. It's also really fun to blend ink through. But this glimmer on this is just amazing. Now it's time to showcase some of the cards. So this is the Sunset Purples, A, B, and C. And I decided to use the BFF Livy Girl on my card. So here was the background that I made right back at the beginning of the video with all the pretty purples. And I did get a little bit over to the inside, but you see what, what I did here was I cut an additional piece of the purple and then I matted it in the black and that covered the center. And then I colored the Livy Girl in some coordinating purples and Copics and cut her out with a coordinating die and attached her down the left side of the card. And then I also used the purple side of a rainbow gem mix. 
Okay, that's this one. There's also some Frankie Comes to Town sequins that also have some really pretty purples in them as well. So you could use either one of them to embellish this card. Next up, we're back to the sky blue paper glaze and those three pretty blues making the ombre background that I did on this one. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And I used lots of Christmas cheer. So I got all those little bears and friends out, did a little bit of coloring and popped them onto the front of the card. And again, I did that little cutout in behind them just to cover anything that I went over when I was doing my ombre. Isn't that cute? This is a really sweet stamp set, love it. And there's coordinating dies as well, which once you're finished coloring, makes it super easy to cut them out. And you can do them as a grouping, or as you can see, there's individual little guys too. So if you had a smaller card or you only wanted a couple of them, great to use. And this one, I use Icicles Sequin Mix, and I stole all the little white snowflakes out of it and added it to this card. On to the leaves. Here is the pumpkin spice that we used on the cards, okay? The three beautiful colors. And I did it on white when I showed you in the video. So here is the white one with all the pretty colors. And I matted the cards in a craft color, which I thought was, you know, similar to the color at the bottom, the gold at the bottom. I also wanted fall and I also wanted masculine because I need some masculine birthday cards. So that was kind of my theory behind why I use those colors. And so I use the um, card topper happy birthday die for my sentiment. And then I cut a black strip and just went all the way across. And you'll see I'm pointing right now at the mat and I did that out of that pretty um, Spellbinders Poppy Field card. So remember I said about the craft one? Here it is on craft. It is gorgeous if I stop moving it around and you can see it. <laughs> and I decided to go long ways with this one and I added the happy birthday at the bottom. So um, this fits on either sideways or lengthwise. And I did the card front in the poppy field. And here's the final leaf one. Again, this is the fall fashion colors. And this one's done on black with the reverse leaf stencil. And this time I did the card topper Happy Fall You All for my die. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I just love that color combination on black. And here's the finished card. And this time I did my sentiment in silver. And as you can see, I overstamped it as well. These are great little dies for adding the perfect sentiment to your cards. Sometimes I don't like to heat emboss, so it's kind of fun to do those. And here's some more fooling around with that latest edition, the Nutcracker Ballet and a few different color combinations. You saw me do this one. I haven't made a card with it yet. Uh, one of the gals on the design team did those. So check out the Facebook community. Um, she's got a beautiful Christmas card done with this on there. I think it was Amanda. A link in the uh, blog post for you. Here's the combination of them going through the flower stencil. And again, now that this is dry, you can rub this like crazy and you will not get any of this glitter to come off. But look at the glitter on it. But you can rub, you can bend it, you can cut it. You will not get any shaggy glitter anywhere. This stuff is gorgeous. So here's the stencil I used for this one. This is Daisy Burst Stencil. And then there's this one, Slimline Details of a Wing. And again, I took all three of the colors and I just randomly applied them. And look what I got. This reminds me of a dragonfly's wing. Just love it. And again, you can rub on this all you want and you won't get any shedding. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so back to that uh, Slimline Rainbows. This is the one I made and it's two-tone. And I had already made a different card that I showed at the beginning of the month. This one was done with just the medium pink on white. And that was my background for my Libby card for Hugs and Kisses. 
So there you go. Here's my selection of cards that I've created with the backgrounds that I used for my ombre paper glazes. I hope you enjoyed today's video. All of the items that I've used are linked below and a link over to the Picket Fence Studios shop where you can add them to your stash. Until next time, toodles!